Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family and a blessed Lent to you. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Now we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Now today we have Karen May with us again. She's the author of a beautiful book called Walking through Holy Week. You could go to her website. It's AmazingGraces.com. It's A-M-A-Y-Z-I-N-G, Graces.com, AmazingGraces.com. So beautiful. And she did such a, a beautiful um, way of helping us all to not just uh, come up into Holy Week, to prepare ourselves in a way that we can participate. She wrote a beautiful book. Um, and ways that you can participate, ways that you can enter in that, like we said in the beginning of Lent, we pray that this will be the greatest Lent of your life, 2020. Why not make it the greatest Holy Week also of your life? And you can get our beautiful book. Yeah, if you get, if you get to have a great Holy Week, it's good to get the book now. Yes. Um, so that you can be studying and preparing and, and thinking so that when you enter into that, the week that changed the world, as we like mm. to say at EWTN. I mean, you're really there with your many thoughts and journeying with the Lord and hearing his voice and the apostles around him. And and uh, this whole idea of placing yourself in the scenes and with the people and seeing and who are you. And I'm really being touched by, um, she shared on the last show about her trip to Jerusalem and being where Peter had denied the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just the pain of that. And I think about the rejection and betrayal of Jesus but we don't think of ourselves, am I going to reject you, Lord? Mm -hmm. Am I the betrayer? Am I the one? Mm -hmm. you know, am I the Judas? Am I Peter at this point? You know, we need to look at that. Yes. Because if you know you can betray the Lord and reject the Lord, you, you probably won't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you think, well, that'll never happen to me, and I'll never, well, Peter said that, right? You know, mm -hmm. Lord, I'll never deny you. Tom Thomas said, let's go and die with him. Let's go and die with him. But, but he, you know, and so we can't, it's pride, I guess, or, or maybe, you know, we have a better look at the story than, than they did. But we need to, to check ourselves out in our own pridefulness and say, Lord, keep me close to your heart, Lord. You know, empower me with your grace. I want to persevere to the end. I want to die in a death like yours that I might know a resurrection like yours. And walking through Holy Week, mm -hmm. those various liturgies, uh, the masses, the reality coming upon us in that way. What a beautiful devotion. Yeah, and you know, maybe you have some Protestant friends who don't do the liturgy as we do in the Catholic Church. Invite them in and say, why don't you come and do Holy Week with us so that you can see it from a whole nother perspective. We did have the beautiful privilege. We were before You were an Episcopal priest before you reverted back to the Catholic Church. And so liturgy was always rich to us. So it wasn't like when I converted that it was such a foreign thing, nor for our children. And we always participated in the liturgy as rich as it was. But maybe you have friends or family members who are of a different faith and they're not rich in their liturgy as we are. Invite them in. That what do you have in common? Jesus. You love Jesus, they love Jesus. Let's take a deep journey into the heart of our King of Walking Kings. Walking through of Holy Lords. Week, a journey into the mm. story of Easter with Karen May. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back while you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today we bring to you again beautiful Karen May, who is the author of a lovely book called Walking Through Holy Week. You can go to our website. It's amazinggraces.com. And it's amazing, A-M-A-Y. 
Y-Z-I-N-G, amazing, Grace says. And um, we want you to go there so you could learn more about this beautiful lady. Now, Karen, tell us you, when we left off, you were, tell us a little bit about the book in ways that it can be used, mm -hmm. um, not just for an individual or for a couple. Yeah. And then also um, how to bring children, the mm -hmm. rest of your family into this the fullness and the richness of Holy Week. That's three questions. Three, I know, I'll try and get them all, try and get them all. And one of the ways that I love to use this book is for people who are participating in RCIA. Like I said, I've been an RCIA, RCIA sponsor a few times and been able to take the people that I'm sponsoring before they enter that Holy wow. Week. Because if you're just entering the church, a lot of times you're just yeah. barely understanding mm -hmm. the regular Mass. Mm -hmm. And then you have to attend Holy Thursday, Good Friday, yeah. Holy Saturday, and then you enter the church. Yeah. And most of the time they're sitting there wide-eyed, like, what right. is this? You know? yeah. And so it's a beautiful way to show this really is the foundation of our faith. This is what happens. This is why we're here yeah. every other Sunday. Yes. And so it's a wonderful way to kind of open that up so that that whole experience for them, like I said, culminates in yeah. their standing waiting to be received into the church yeah. just in tears. And they're really, mm -hmm. not that we all you know, are not on the journey. They're really in the midst of that journey. Okay? The and they're even still considering, am I going all the way with this? Aren't I? I, I was not a sponsor last year for any uh, catechist person going through this, but somebody wasn't there for them and they just tapped me on the so sh shoulder, the one working with everybody. Right. Could you stand in for this? Person? And all of a sudden I went up where everybody was seated and it was a different feeling up there. Right, with all right. these people. So you're, you're right. This could really benefit, uh, benefit them greatly because they're really in that Holy Week journey. Mm -hmm. they're, right. they're there. Right, and then they can take all of that into the following Sunday Masses and yeah. into the rest of their year because now they have a deeper understanding of all the things that went into that first Mass mm -hmm. and that first, first sacrifice. Yeah. Um, and then with children, what I love about this is my children from an early age, because I knew the stories, because it was so real to me, yeah. and that's what's important for me. It's not only to tell the story, but make it real because this is real, you know, going right. to the Holy mm -hmm. Land, like the tomb is there, mm -hmm. you know, the, the place where he had the Last Supper is there, like this actually happened, it's historical, this is a real person, and a lot of times it just becomes a story for it's us, mm -hmm. and so I want to make it real for my children as well, and just like any other thing, your children understand on a level that you explain to them, so you explain don't touch the stove because it's hot, mm -hmm. you don't explain electricity or fire, mm -hmm. you, you yeah. say it's going to hurt, mm -hmm. and so in the same way, all of these stories we can tell on their level, so yeah. my youngest loved on Thursday watching the foot washing, mm -hmm. she'd like, can I go out so I can see, and I just mm -hmm. pray like, please do not run up there, please do not mm -hmm. run up there. Mm -hmm. but she would make everybody get out of the way mm -hmm. and just watch mm -hmm. because she loved that now did I tell her all the meaning of you know right. go and do likewise mm -hmm. and all that no mm -hmm. I said this is this is the priest serving our community just as Jesus serves us and that's all she needed at three mm -hmm. right. you know and so each year kind of taking what she's interested in and using that as a place to teach her but I know what to teach her because I know the story. And so the more that you understand and live and experience the story, the more clearly you can explain yeah. it to your children mm -hmm. so that then they can become interested and fascinated. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is fascinating. I mean, especially from a child, you know, like, what is, what is he doing over yeah. there? And what is all this smoke? And, mm -hmm. and why are we in here? And it's dark. And, and even going into adoration, my daughter one time, I said, we're going to go in just like the disciples did with Jesus. And she goes, are we going to sleep? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I said, oh, we're going to try not to. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but she remembered the story, mm -hmm. you know, and yep. it was just this way, like we get to go do that too, but we're going to stay awake. Mm -hmm. We're going to, yeah. we're going to do a little bit better. Yeah. You know, you're making so many good points about instruction and about teaching of which didactic teaching, verbal teaching is one aspect. Right. And sometimes, you know, in some of our other expressions of the faith, that's about the only expression is didactic teaching, which is effective, but how effective really? And we as Catholics understand that it's the senses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sight, taste, touch, right. smell, and Holy Week is full, full of, of extras. Right. Yes. And, and for right. children especially. And mm -hmm. then you've got your book where you're asking so many questions, you're not only teaching, do excellent teaching, but you're asking so many questions. And that's a great way of learning. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's not one necessarily right answer, you know, because you're in the scene, you're there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what children will say, you know, what they're seeing, what they're hearing, what they're thinking, mm -hmm. their sorrows, their fears, their, their hopes in the midst of all of this. Well, and how much do they teach us? What I love, you know, just in my faith in general, that my children teach me from the questions that they ask, just mm -hmm. like my husband did. Um, at one point, again, my youngest, she's, I don't know, she's kind of my like gate, gateway to God, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're going up on Holy, on Good Friday to the cross. And she at a very early age was not comfortable with death and suffering. Mm -hmm. And so she's fairly young and does not want to go up but she does not want me to be gone from her. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of made a, a negotiation. She would just stay at the last pew while I went up to the, to the cross and venerated, and then I would take her. Yeah. And she waited, and just that few feet was so difficult for mm -hmm. her, and we stepped out. She was so upset and so embarrassed that she was having a hard time and no one else was. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful moment for me to say, you know what? you're the one who gets it mm. like you this is how we all should be mm. i should be as upset as you mm -hmm. i should be as traumatized as you this is horrible and and i don't feel it as deeply as you do this is a gift that you've been given mm -hmm. and what a beautiful moment for me in the things that she's connecting with mm -hmm. you know so we really grow together in holiness which is beautiful and that's the beautiful part about bringing your children through all of the masses, right? Mm -hmm. So that they can enter in as opposed to, yes, it's late, maybe it's not the most convenient time, but mm -hmm. even if you could be there and get a half hour of it or whatever mm -hmm. you can do as a family to enter in that, because we're taking them into another world. Right. I mean, this isn't happening any place, mm -hmm. you know, except inside the walls of the church. Right. And um, so you want to take them into this other world where they can experience all the smells and the bells and the whistles and everything mm -hmm. that we have, right. but we have Jesus. And right. that's the relationship that we want to give them and say, he did this for you. He died for you. Right. He loves you. But I'm thinking of you know, that song, I guess it's in the scripture, where he touched me. Mm. You know, yes. or, and Jesus said, who touched me? And mm -hmm. I touched you. And, mm -hmm. and if our kids could experience that, and that's what Holy Eucharist is, is, right. is so mm -hmm. much about, that he's, mm -hmm. we, we can taste and see the Lord is good. If we could touch by the Lord, have you been touched by the Lord? Have you mm. touched him? Right. Because right. you're never the same. Never. But the difficulties yeah. with so many of our people, for some reason they're not getting or they haven't touched or been touched, don't need that they need to be touched or that they get to touch the Lord. It's kind of like, it's just kind of like, you know, it's all right. up here or something mm -hmm. or something you experience. This is real. This is historic. And that the stuff of history is now becoming present at these masses. Right. You know, right. it's, and when that presence happens, then you're transformed. <laughs> if, it's an, if it's just a, a theory or a philosophy, there's really not much to it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, but even in this Lent, for me, kind of the theme has been love, that I'm going towards love, that this absolute offering of love in the crucifixion and in the resurrection, and that's the thing we keep, you know, we focus on the yeah. suffering and the suffering, mm -hmm. and it's so easy to be overwhelmed by the suffering yeah. that you almost forget, but there's resurrection, mm -hmm. there is life, the, the point of the suffering was this new life. Yeah. And, and when we go through our land saying, I will give this to you in love, I will give this sacrifice, I will, you know, not have my chocolate or I will give mm -hmm. up my coffee, which, mm -hmm. you know, everybody in your family has to give that up mm -hmm. in love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I will do these things because I love you is so much different than I will do these things because I have to, mm -hmm. because I'm not a good enough person if mm -hmm. I don't. Right. Right. And that whole concept of going through Holy Week and getting to that place of love that when you get, you know, for, for our children, when you get, you know, the Easter baskets, mm -hmm. like look at the abundance that God gives us. Yeah. And we're celebrating that today. Yes. Like all of this has been to get to Easter and mm -hmm. celebrate that today. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how critical it is to, for us to define love. Mm -hmm. You know, like my great aunt from Italy used to say, love a love a lover. You all talk about a lover, you know, <laughs> but I go to mass and I know love. You know, every oh, day I wow. go to mass. But, you know, it's what is love? I mean, there's so much talk about love, right. you know, and love is about, well, I take this as long as it works for me, that's love. Right. But you're mm -hmm. speaking about agape love. You're mm -hmm. talking about this is love, not that you love God, but that he loved you mm -hmm. right. and gave mm -hmm. up his life for you. Oh, yeah. And now, since you get that, you understand that you have the sacraments. Now, 
those who lose their lives, lose your life. It's mm. all about love. This is love. To, to, lose, to give, it's so yeah. disorienting. It is, it is. But then once you get your mind around it a little bit, or there just start to do that, to mm -hmm. lose your life, then you gain it so much more. You what? know, if I just give my life to Christ yeah. and let him take my life, then the life that comes into me is so much more than I ever had before. Yes. What inspired mm -hmm. you to spend so much time and write such a, a large, beautiful <laughs> book. What was moving you about Holy Week so much that you got to write a book about it? It really was that whole sense of coming alive, that story and making it real. That for a long time, you know, I kind of had this understanding of God, you know, he's way up there, kind of the puppeteer. And, and I knew that he was involved in my life, but he would just kind of come down and like, ding, you mm -hmm. know, answer a prayer, or give me some comfort or whatever. But I had this experience where it became very plain that God wasn't up there somewhere. He was here. Mm -hmm. He was within me, mm -hmm. closer than I could be wow. to myself. Mm -hmm. And so that understanding of the reality of the story really transformed in the Holy Week, where that story became so real and so present. And, and then the depth, like you can understand what I love about our faith is that you can understand on a very shallow level, just put your toes in, here's the story. But then there's so much depth. And, and in the Holy Week services, you have the Old Testament reading that tells you what's happening in the New Testament reading. So yes, Jesus did this, but if you understand what happened so long ago, then the depth of your understanding of that movement, mm -hmm. your depth of the understanding of this bread that's being given for us wow. in context of the manna that allowed the wow. Israelites to survive in the desert miraculously. Mm -hmm. And then here's this bread that's, God, that has to be bigger than that. It mm -hmm. has to be more miraculous than the manna. Mm -hmm. So it has to be his body. Right. You know, it, as he says, this is my body. It can't be symbolic because mm -hmm. it's less than what he is referring to right. in the manna. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's not what Jesus does. Right. He makes yeah. it more. Mm -hmm. And so all of this, I just had to show to anybody I could. Karen, mm -hmm. Karen thank you so much for thank blessing you. the church with this book, Walking Through Holy Week, that we might more deeply come into the reality of Jesus Christ Thank and you. who Thank he you is and what he's done for us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You. Go to Amazing Graces, that's with a Y, AmazingGraces.com for more information. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Plenty more to come. Welcome back. Well, Father John Paul joins us again today on the show. But before we speak with him, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, we have just completed our first full week of Lent. How is your Lent progressing so far? Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy. It's always wonderful to be with you. And this week, of course, we are focusing on Lent because we're in the second week of Lent, actually. And, you know, I think if most people were honest, they'd probably tell you this is a season that they actually kind of dread. And first place, it's six weeks long. And I mean, wow, that's a long period of time. And it's marked by prayer, probably not too difficult as it's already a part of our life. It's marked by fasting. Now, that might be the tough part. And it's marked by almsgiving. And do we really know what that is? Well, you know, I went on your guest website and AmazingGraces.com. And I misread the title of one of Karen's blogs. I read it as Fall in Love with Lent this year. When, of course, the actual title was Fall in Love for Lent this year, meaning falling in love with Jesus. And then I said to myself, do you think that's really possible to be in love with Lent? Because this is a, a season of self-discipline, of self-denial, of giving up things that might be food or bad habits or, or maybe a pastime that you love and making those things a gift to God. But Lent is also a period of positive things, of good actions, of actions where we try to be there for others, to become better people spiritually, to become more generous and caring, attentive, loving people. 
and we try to make more time if it's not already in our lives for example for the daily rosary and for daily mass now self-discipline and that's the tough part self-discipline is a big part of this but you know um, I feel personally that the Lenten sacrifice will work if we don't try to go beyond our capabilities I mean one time Mother Teresa said I know God won't give me anything I can't handle I just wish he didn't trust me so much now I have to say that one of my favorite things to do is when I say the rosary mysteries of the rosary or I do the way of the cross which could be in a book or in a church I try to immerse myself in that mystery of the rosary or that station I mean I really try to be there to be with Mary to be with Jesus the Apostles the disciples even to be with the people who wanted to, to kill Jesus and I find myself asking questions and what do I feel what do I see what do I hear as I do this and you know what um, I ask myself do I truly understand what Christ's death meant for mankind and for me Joan he knows me personally so uh, my point being that if we try to do everything that I've talked about today and all the fasting and the prayer and the almsgiving if we actually become a better person and improve our spiritual life because of Lent then you know what we can fall in love with Lent just my ideas on this but time's up so back to you Joan your ideas are precious and increase our love for the holy season of Lent and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ father your thoughts well, it's great reading uh, through this book and I'd recommend it to for people to get for um, you know, their loved ones who are going through RCIA just to, mm. just to know Holy Week a little better. And it's just the first week of Lent. I think for me to, to be meditating already on Holy Week is a special thing. I just want to mention one thing. Yeah. we got some time. Um, you mentioned in the first show on Wednesday about uh, the absence about um, Good Friday after Holy Thursday. I call that the real absence. You know, wow. We speak about the real presence, presence. Mm -hmm. and then going into a church and experiencing a real absence mm. yes. where the tabernacle is empty, the altar is stripped. And we were ex encouraged early in religious life to go sit in the chapel with the tabernacle open and just to do a holy hour and just to pray with the Lord not in the mm. tabernacle. It is very striking. Mm. I yes. call it the real absence. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing better than to, I think, to increase your hunger for the Lord's real presence than to yes. do that. Yeah. I can remember going in the, our first, my first Holy Thursday and walking in and it was like, oh, I mean, it does take your breath away because yep. you're so, um, you don't want to say used to, but you you know his presence is going to be there. And as a convert on my way, I believed he was there. And so for that, for the tabernacle to be open and empty, it does. It's like, oh, you know, yeah, people where did they take him? People are, are ready to genuflect. I'm like, and that don't genuflect. No, don't he's genuflect. Not here. He's not here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. You talk about le your last time sharing with us. You spoke about anamnesis. Yeah. Which is the real presence of the Lord who comes to us through Holy Eucharist, the, His presence, His sacrifice, which is the opposite of amnesia. Yeah. Forgetting, not not understanding, knowing, and we need anamnesis to help us remember because we have amnesia regarding our being a part of the family of God, a child of God, the salvation, intimacy with the Lord. Everything that Jesus did, said, participated in, participates in divine eternity because he's God the Son, the eternal word. His words, his actions, everything participates in divine eternity that transcends time. Yeah. You know, that's anamnesis. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Father, close us in a prayer and with a blessing. Sure. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. And may he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You, what a great blessing for us to journey together, to walk together the road to Calvary with Jesus and his apostles, to journey all the way through the crucifixion, um, his being laid to rest, but on the third day, rising again. May this be the best Lent and Easter of your life. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.